NASA wants to head to Mars and use a 3D printer to print whatever they might need. 3D printing is used in all types of sectors. Blueprints for 3D printed guns can be found online. Even meat is being freshly printed. Some ideas are fascinating, others a bit worrying. But what about the ecological footprint? How sustainable is 3D printing actually? That's our topic on Shift today. In 3D printing, a process called additive manufacturing is used. This means you add material layer by layer until the object is fully printed. For this, many materials can be used. Plastic, metal and even chocolate. Researchers are already experimenting with using human cells to print skin or organs. There are also many 3D printed houses, just like these environmentally friendly ones. The US-based startup Azure 3D prints tiny houses made of recycled plastic. More than 60% of the raw material comes from recycled plastic bottles and food packaging. After a house design is complete, it takes just 24 hours to print the building's outer structure. Azure says its method of constructing houses is 70% faster and 30% cheaper than conventional building methods. 3D printing is supposed to be more environmentally friendly. The construction industry is the largest consumer of raw material and responsible for about a third of global CO2 emissions. The processes themselves are energy intensive and not much is reused or recycled. 3D printing could change this as materials are considered more resource friendly. 3D printing is known well, more formally as additive manufacturing, which obviously means instead of taking away, you're adding one layer by one layer by one layer. There is obviously some waste if you have print failures or other things, but it really reduces it because instead of getting rid of the material, you are just building up what you need. In addition, less storage space is needed because the building materials are put together right on site. That can be incredibly useful, especially in crisis situations. There is a huge place for 3D printing and construction, especially in disaster-stricken areas or those with high homeless populations, sudden influxes of population from refugees or otherwise. There's a huge, huge opportunity here, especially using local materials to create new sustainable concrete and get things happening really quickly. Building houses quickly and using recycled materials sounds pretty great. But that alone won't solve our plastic waste problem. After all, 91% of our plastic isn't being recycled, meaning it can't be used in construction. The 3D printing sector could change this and use waste for good. It's a kind of a different view we have to do on, on the materials now we are creating. Imagine that from the 3% to the 7% of the cost of each product we buy is the packaging, and then we throw it. Every day, you throw millions of materials, everyone, and we think that these materials are the base of a new industry. Packaging isn't the only thing being salvaged. Food waste is too. One example, muscle shells. They normally end up in the trash, but developers from Spain are testing out ways to make them into new products using 3D printing. We as a society, we produce a lot, a lot of waste related to the ocean, like, uh, like mussels, uh, mussel shells. So with this, we create powder, and then with this powder, we can transform it into a kind of ceramic. What we do is we 3D print this powder with some other materials, and then we can use this at the end as a surface or as an object that can be useful for us. The researchers are experimenting with egg and nut shells as well. Sustainability in 3D printing may start with the materials, but that's not where it ends. Sustainability is such a huge topic that, you know, we need to take a lot into account in the full end-to-end -end life cycle. So understanding the right materials and using the right amount of them, being able to create lighter weight, more complex parts with less material, as well as using the least amount of power possible. Um, and shortening the carbon footprint by shortening the logistics. If the building materials don't need to be transported halfway across the world, that could lower our CO2 emissions. Of course, ideally, we would be repurposing our trash too. 
The construction industry is experimenting with natural resources that are available locally. One example is clay. This chicken coop is made of clay, a very traditional material. But it was built using modern technology, 3D printing. Still, costs were kept low since clay is available locally. It's much cheaper than conventional bricks or cement. Making use of local materials is important, especially now in an energy crisis, says Hungarian Christian Gora. The costs of modern building materials are rising so much that the choice will be clear. If you have to decide between using what's already in the ground next to you or spending endless amounts of money to manufacture and ship the material, you're going to lean towards building with clay. And that's not just cheaper, it's more environmentally friendly too. Hardly any transport is involved, and the construction process uses much less energy. What makes loam so great for 3D printing? This material doesn't have to be manufactured, so you don't need to invest a lot of money into it. Unlike bricks, which need to be burnt, or cement, which needs to reach 1,600 to 1,800 degrees Celsius in the production process, here you dig up the local soil, mix it with clay and hay, and then the printing can begin. The technology is still in the development phase. But in three years, Christian Gora intends to print a real house out of clay. Traditional craftsmanship and modern technology. I think it's a perfect match. Another project in development is construction drones, essentially flying 3D printers. These could replace energy-intensive heavy machinery and take on more dangerous tasks at great heights. This could make the construction sector safer and more environmentally friendly. This may be the future of construction. Researchers from the Imperial College London have developed a fleet of flying 3D printers. Our approach here was to think of multiple agents that work together and liberate the 3D printing process from the closed build envelope of ground-based printers. Because of that, they are scalable, we can have thousands of agents eventually, and they can parallelize the manufacturing process. This would reduce the need for large machinery, which would decrease CO2 emissions and lower costs. Plus, the drones could tackle dangerous tasks like working on high buildings. I'm not saying that it might replace all of construction, but even if you touch 5% of the construction industry with this, it is already a huge gain and can reduce CO2 consumption, increase safety, reduce logistics needs, and like this help the sector. The drones use a specially designed ultra-lightweight cement, and they're completely autonomous. Construction drones print, while scanning drones check that everything is going to plan. The idea comes from nature. It's modelled on how wasps behave. These natural builders work together to build their homes. It's not about copying everything about the nature, it's copying the principle and then building, and building robots that benefit from uh, the philosophy of how the natural world operates very robustly and in a scalable manner, and then benefiting from the best of technology that we have access to. From works of art to custom-fitted prosthetic limbs, 3D printing is transforming a variety of sectors, even the way we eat. The food printing market is expected to grow by about 50% annually over the next five years. Bakeries are using 3D printers to automate parts of the process or fulfill special orders. And it may look nice, but food out of a printer? That doesn't really sound tasty to me. This company prints meat, but it's not manufactured from animals. It's plant-based, using ingredients like beans, peas and coconut fat. Beet juice is used to imitate blood. When I want to, uh, to create my steak, I, can, I have a, a library of a few different slabs. I can choose each one of them and I can adjust it accordingly. I can define the amount of marbling, the internal fat or the external fat. And now I can, and I can start and uh, go and print it and produce it. The startup plans to ramp up production and print up to 500 tons of food a month. They're already selling their vegetarian steaks in several European countries. In the past two years, we have been working deeply on understanding meat and what makes meat so exciting. And we identified a few components that we can recreate from plants 
and have the same exact uh, performance as the tissue of animal meat. The products are primarily geared towards people aiming to eat less meat or none at all. We see a world in a decade from now that new meat or meat made from plants is a big part of the meat industry. It replaces a lot of the meat that people consume today that is bad for the environment and bad for the most, most of the people in the supply chain. I still believe that people will consume high quality meat forever coming from animals and these two industries will live side by side. Fake meat production in Germany rose by about 62% between 2019 and 2021. 3D printed food could be a welcome relief for our oceans. Overfishing threatens to destroy marine habitats and throw ecosystems out of balance. This startup from Austria produces 3D printed salmon. The various components, such as muscle and fat, are recreated using a range of plant-based ingredients. The 3D printer gives the salmon its typical consistency and look. While many people will continue eating fish and meat, others are seeking out alternatives, which is great news for our oceans, the climate and the environment. So how about having a vegan steak from a 3D printer for dinner? That could reduce our environmental impact. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, nearly 15% of harmful emissions come from livestock farming. When it comes to protecting the environment, 3D printing may not be a bad idea. 3D printing is really uniquely positioned to be a more sustainable and less wasteful industry than traditional manufacturing. It's still a young industry, so there are a lot of learning steps ahead to truly optimize and achieve this potential. But the way that we're seeing it going, I can only believe that this is better for the world from a sustainability perspective. Less waste, lighter objects and more sustainable materials. 3D printing is full of potential to make production processes much more energy and resource efficient. It's unbelievable to see all of the things that can be printed these days. What would you like to print and how do you think this technology could be used best? Let us know. Bye and see you next time.